Our guest this morning has got a superhero tale of sorts. He's made the world a better place with his sense of humor. By day, he taught children in the New York City public school system. By night, he delighted audiences with his wildly entertaining physical comedy. We welcome to the show this morning one of the funniest people of all time, Lenny Schultz. Go crazy, Lenny. How's it going? Okay, I'm going to go crazy. I, I could really go crazy if I want. Let's see what happens. It would be cool to, you know, kind of bring back some of those characters that have made you so famous. It was so wonderful to research in your career, Lenny, and so great to have you here on the show. You're definitely a legend. I mean, just what a remarkable career. And, and the journey really starts right here in the Bronx, you know, uh, growing up here in the borough and getting a chance to really perform as a comedian and an actor. Tell us a little bit about your rise in the world of comedy. Well, I'm born in the Bronx Hospital, actually, and... Uh... I wasn't into comedy, of course, uh, even in my young, young man. I didn't know I would become a comic. Um, I was a, a quiet, introverted, shy type of kid. And the only way to get attention as a kid to do silly faces and silly sounds and all that. And, uh, but never thought of the comedy. In my day, the, you know, who knew uh, to, you know, comedy with uh, comedians? I didn't know that kind of stuff. Uh, here's how I actually started. I was funny with my friends, in, in, uh, and, and I was a teacher, and I taught uh, in the Bronx, Queens, a, l a lot of high schools. But my friends said, hey, you're so funny. And so they dragged me down to a place called the Improvisation in Manhattan. It was a comedy club. And they had these, uh, you know, the you get up there for, for, to try out, whatever you call it, you know. And I tried out. They liked me. I had five minutes of material. I was, I remember, very nervous. My heart was pounding. I did well. And the uh, owner of the place was called Bud Friedman. And he saw me. And he says, hey, we like you. The, the audience liked you a lot. So uh, you could become a regular if you want. So I said, hey, hey, this is pretty nice. I'm getting laughs and all that. So I start uh, coming down at the night uh, to the improv and studying to be a comedian, getting the uh, you know, uh, experience on the stage. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched that first, you know, first appearance on the Merv Griffin show. And, and even that's remarkable, too, I would say, Lenny, because at that time you didn't have all of these different cable stations. You only had several, you know, stations in terms of programming just to even be on a late night show like that had to be some some special feeling. And you had this outstanding bit about the first moon landing. Uh, what do you remember about that performance? And how did you come up with that bit? It was so funny. Well, I wasn't a regular stand up comic like a Seinfeld or David Brenner, you know, telling the, uh, reality, you know, telling j jokes about lot, real life. I couldn't do that. I did un unusual things. By the way, when I did the first man to walk on the moon, I did it in 1968. And we landed on the moon in 69. So I did it one year before we landed on the moon. I just came up with uh, uh, unusual, unique type things. That's my personality. I couldn't do their stuff, you know, regular uh, stand up. I had to do my uh, crazy kind of stuff. I wouldn't call it crazy, but uh, unique. I mean, all those different shows that you appeared on at that time, whether it was with Merv or or Frank Sinatra or Ed Sullivan. I mean, just some of the great, great names in the business. Is there one particular television appearance from that early part of, uh, early part of your career that you think got the best response in, turn of the, in terms of the crowd audience? I was lucky. My, my, my material was like uh, middle America, really. Everyone could understand it and... Uh, it was easy to understand, and 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 I, and I showed a lot of talent, sound effects, faces, different kind of the things, and, uh, and it, well, the laughing, the new. I wasn't on the original laughing with Goldie Horn and all those people. Mine was six years later. George Slaughter, the producer, started the second laughing, and I was uh, auditioned for it out in L.A. And uh, I, be, I came one of the regulars with Robin Williams was on that show, uh, Waylon Flowers and Madam and several other people. Uh, unfortunately, we only did about 10, 12 of them, one hour specials and, uh, uh, and uh, they, they took us off the air. Our, uh, something happened with, with business money and all that, who knows? But it, if it would have lasted, I would have became a real big star, you know? You gotta be lucky in this business. So when did you realize, Lenny, that you could make people laugh? I was making faces and doing crazy stuff as a little kid. 
So I, I was making people up, but I didn't and never thought of being a comic. So, uh, and that's how I started with these two uh, comic, the two teachers that brought me down to the improv. And I went on, on the open mic night, it was called. And uh, three months later, I'm on TV. So now prior, you know, basically prior to the comedy, according to the story, from what I gather, how it goes is that you had another potential career path, which so many boys here in the Bronx aspire to have. And that that is potentially one day playing for the Yankees. So tell us about your contract offer from the Bronx Bombers. Well, I was a, a very good baseball player. I think I started uh, baseball when I was about 13, 14 uh, around uh, by Taft High School, you know, the, the fields around there. And uh, I was an outfielder with a terrific arm. So our uh, pitcher on our team got hurt and uh, they said, hey, try pitching. And I uh, became a pitcher and I had a real good fastball and it developed over the years till, uh, till I played against a, a team affiliated with the Yankees. By the way, I played for a Bronx team called Corsairs. And I think, uh, yeah, I just wrote this down so I could remember. And it became the Billikens. Then I played for the Bronx Cortona Royals from Cortona Park in the Bronx. Wow. And we had, uh, uh, me and another kid were the only high school uh, uh, players on the team. The others were college players. And we had a couple of guys who played minor league baseball. I pitched against a, a team affiliated with the Yankees. Yankees got the best ball players in the metropolitan area. I pitched against them, and I didn't know that Paul Kreschel, the head Yankee scout, was there. And I struck out about 16 of them, you know? I had a tremendous fastball. We never knew how fast I pitched because they didn't have the um, gate, uh, the radar gun then, you know? But I had a, a real, real good fastball, two-seamer, four-seamer, and I had tremendous movement. So at the beginning, I remember as a pitcher, I was wild. Guys would be afraid to face me. <laughs> you know, I hit them and throwing the ball all over the place. But then I got real good. So then um, I struck out all these guys. And then the next morning I get a call. Hello, is this Lenny Schultz? Yeah. Oh, this is so-and-so. Uh, I'm the bird dog scout for, for Paul Kreschel, the head Yankee scout. We saw you pitch. We'd like to hear his exact words. We would like, uh, we'd like to know if you'd like to play for the New York Yankee baseball uh, organization. I said, sure. And I'm a kid, naive kid. And I said, what about a bonus? <laughs> so uh, it, it was crazy. So uh, they offered me, um, in those days, you see today, there's A ball, A, double A, triple A majors. In my day, there was D, C, B, then A, double A, you know what I mean? So they uh, offered me at the beginning C ball, then through, uh, you know, talking to my representatives, which were my family, they didn't know anything anyway. They were going to send me to class B. So I was skipping D and C. But then I started getting calls. This is a crazy story. Uh, 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 from other teams, Cleveland, Chicago, White Sox, this. And, you know, they heard, they heard the rumors started. Hey, who's this guy who struck out 16, 17 guys with, the, with that great team that the Yankees put together? Uh, my family decided, hey, ne let's not sign with the Yankees. They wanted to send me, um, uh, sign me immediately. Let's wait and the next week, because the next week about eight, eight, nine major league scouts are going to watch me. I could have gone to a ball and who knows what kind of money I would have gotten. Yeah. But the next week I played against the Mount Vernon Trojans from Mount Vernon, uh, Westchester. And about the second batter, I dislocated my arm. Could you imagine that? So my, my whole career went down right there and they didn't have the arthroscopic. They couldn't fix it. I, I separated the clavicle from the humerus, and it was a real bad separation. So uh, my career was over. I was devastated. So I didn't know what to do. So I said, Jesus, the only thing, I'm not a businessman. I know sports. So I went to NYU, became a high school gym teacher, and I was a gym teacher. And, and then I, later on in life, I became a comedian. That was part one of our interview with one of the kings of comedy, Lenny Schultz. Tune in next Monday for part two.